Nearly all our focus the past few days has been on Massachusetts races. But now that Senator Ed Markey is claiming an historic victory and the incumbent congressman won across the board, there's another incumbent who appears to be rising from the ashes in the polls. Yes, that incumbent. A new USA Today Suffolk University poll finds Joe Biden is leading Donald Trump by just 7 percent nationally, down from a 12 percent advantage in June. Joined now by the man behind those findings, Suffolk University pollster David Paleologos. How are you doing, David? Doing well. How are you? So uh, good. How do you explain uh, uh, a cut in half of Biden's uh, lead over two months? You know, the, Donald Trump has extended his lead among areas that you'd expect, men, white voters, older voters. So what was a few points lead back in June is now double digits in those categories. Doesn't look like he's stealing anything from Joe Biden and Joe Biden's core base or even winning that many more independents. He's really shoring up his own base. And and before Trump attempts to, tr to micro target, he's trying to hit these macro targets first. Yeah, I, I have to say, I don't get it. I mean, you do wrong direction, right direction. The numbers are staggering. 62% wrong track, 30% right track. I mean, that's an environment in which an incumbent is closing the margin. I mean, aren't they going in different directions? Except if you're a Republican. If you're a Republican, it's 62% right track. And, you know, if you're a Democrat, it's 7 percent right track. But the key is independence. Independence is only 23 percent right track. And that's really the turf that this election is going to be won or lost on. I want to ask you one more sort of big picture thing. You uh, even though uh, more people say they're tell you they're voting for uh, Biden than Trump, you ask well, this is one of my favorite questions. Who do you think will win? And a, a plurality, 44 to 41 percent, say Trump. Are those, is that question ever determinative of anything, or is it just a fun and curious number? No, it's, you know, perception oftentimes drives reality. And so I always look at how independents answer this question, because let's and face it. And how did they? 4239, Trump. So... Uh. That's the play, and that's flipped, you know, since since June when Joe Biden was seen as the winner in the perception question. So, you know, Trump is the poll is telling us that Trump's shoring up his base and he's beginning to win the perception battle, especially among independents. Well, I think you can also I think you can make case that he's uh, quote winning at least some audience on his, quote, law and order message. You say, which come closer to your view? 41% police shootings of blacks reflect systemic racism. A larger number, 49%, say police shootings of blacks reflect case by case individual misdeeds. That is some support for the notion that he's succeeding in selling this on the, quote, law and order guy, is it not? Yes, it's, it's, this is a kind of issue that is a crossover issue. Just like, as I wrote about a couple of years ago, health care for Democrats is really a crossover where you can win over independence. Similarly, this is the kind of question, but we have a divided America. I mean, the systemic racism response was vastly different between blacks and whites. It was 35 percent saying systemic racism among, uh, among whites, and it was in the 70s among blacks, 78 percent. So, you know, th therein lies the divide. Speaking of divides, David, are you concerned that widespread mail-in voting will lead to voter fraud? Obviously, another relentless message from the president. Eighty-three percent Republicans, 33 percent Democrats, a majority of independents. Obviously, uh, people are, uh, are warming to the president's message that this thing is going to be rigged. But it relates to a larger thing. You also say, I saw in the USA Today article, speaking of mail-in, that uh, more uh, Trump voters will vote in person, almost two to one. More uh, Biden voters will vote by mail. Have you heard the term red mirage at all in the last couple of days? <laughs> Do you know no. what it is? Well, let me explain for people who don't know. It's this theory that Trump is going to be ahead when people go to sleep on November 3rd because in-person ballots will be counted, and there are more of his people doing that. And only days later, if Biden is to succeed, will he take the lead? 
thus once again buttressing Trump's notion this this is a fix. I was ahead on election night, and they stole it from me. And in all likelihood, he will be ahead on election night, will he not, based on the numbers of who's going to vote in person and who's going to vote by mail, no? Could very well be. And think about the exit polling, Jeff. The exit polling is nothing but, you know, selected precincts that reflect that state's outcome. And if you've got, you know, an abundance of voters favoring Trump, at those poll locations, that's going to impact exit polling, and it's going to be a disaster. It's going to be a total mess. David, last thing, you're quoted in the, uh, the USA Today piece saying, and this was surprising to me, this is the exact same August margin that Hillary Clinton was up uh, four years ago. And you'd say, quote, I'd say Biden is no better off at this point. There was no coronavirus and there was no 180,000 and climbing number of dead Americans. Doesn't that dramatically change the dynamic from what Hillary was experiencing? Depends on how you look at it. I mean, think of how dire and how bad that situation is. And Trump is still in a, in, in a point mm-hmm. value deficit similar to four years ago. And think about where the numbers would be if there wasn't a coronavirus situation. So I I think it depends on how you interpret those numbers. And, you know, as I also said in that article, I mean, Biden has a lot going for him. He's not polarizing like Hillary Clinton was. He doesn't have the intensity against him. But at the same time, he doesn't have Hillary's enthusiasm. People are just not enthusiastic about Biden. Well, in any case, David Paley-Logos, thank you. I think, anyway, it was good to see you as always. Appreciate it. My pleasure.